Magandang hapong po sa lahat. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Rocky. Uh, please don't be Iraqi. So that Whitey will be angry. So for those who are listening in Facebook Live, as well as as well in Zoom, salamat po sa inyong palaging pakikinig. I'm little bit scared because how Brother Jojo gave his comments about sa akin. Baka marami nang tatago nito. <laughs> well, with a very good intention, but sometimes uh, intentions are not being uh, properly understand or understood. But anyway, I would like to encourage everyone to be a friend of mine. Uh, willing naman po ako magpakake. <laughs> So thank you for the privilege once again to preach to us the word of the Lord. We are now at the book of, we are now again back to Mark chapter 14 verses 26 to 42. So as we march on studying this beautiful gospel of, Ma of Mark, uh, for me it is clearly as the days goes by, my affection my adoration to the risen king is continuously maturing. Yun yung pagkalagay ko sa Mark. <laughs> My adoration to the risen king is growing. Yeah. Kaya mabilis maintindihan, balikan yung, yung Mark. Of course, uh, we would like to thank the Lord for everyone who, who comes. Uh, hindi lamang dahil sa anniversary. But they are faithfully keep on coming. And also we recognize the, the special occasions of your life. I see in Facebook and I'm not able to manage to greet uh, some of our friends that this is their special day or maybe <coughs> yesterday. And I would like to greet our beloved uh, one of our Thor. Uh, they call me, he call me, used to call me Pass. So now I call him Thor. Alam niyo, medyo malakas at ika nga hindi sakiti naman. Mukhang, uh, tawag nito, mukhang uh, superhero. Eh, tingin kasi sa mga pastor, laging uh, balisa, <laughs> laging ugudugod. Or, so, Pastor Dong, uh, we greet you, I greet you a happy birthday. Uh, thank you for your life. You are such a blessing to me and to the church. Of course, we commend also to those who uh, invite their friends last uh, anniversary and we praise the Lord for the life of Pastor Alvin. I will share to him uh, ilang mga response sa mga kapatiran. I will take the screenshot and see to him how, how you guys learn uh, that preaching so of course uh, you are not uh, inviting only every anniversary but faithfully every Saturday so we praise the Lord for the faithful members of this church faithful attendees uh, there are people will come and go so ang ilan marahil sa inyo ay magiging regular na attendees na dito and most probably as the Lord will call you you will be part of this church to minister to us so let us start with a prayer let us come to the Lord in prayer our Father and our God we thank you Lord for your grace for your mercy thank you for your love that you demonstrated by sending Jesus, Jesus will live a perfect life. Died at the cross of Calvary, and after three days he rose again, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus, that you take the cup 
of suffering that we who believe in you will never suffer again or will never be condemned. Thank you for that conviction, for that clarity. And I pray today as we hear the gospel will convict us, will give us understanding that, me, that we will live according to thy gospel. And this is we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. So let us come to our Bible. Let us open it. We'll come and go. Uh, tuloy lang tayo sa book of Mark. So as we go, as we go, as we continue, we'll just keep on reading these verses from 26 up to 42. Now I, I made a title, not my will, but yours. Of course, it is not my will; it is the will of Jesus in this text. So hindi ang kaluuban, sabi ng Panginoong Isos, hindi ang kaluuban ko, kundi ang kaluuban mo, Ama. It is referring to God the Father. Last time, we stopped in the book of Mark, that is two weeks ago, we study the Lord's Supper. And it was preached by our Pastor Dong. If you still remember, he taught us how important it is, the Lord's Supper, or the breaking of the bread. That is the second ordinance the church is observing. As we do today, we will do the Lord's Supper. Usually, we are doing this every first Saturday. Well, previously, every first Friday. When we will go back to Philippines, it will be first Sunday. Well, we observe this. This is very important. So we'll do that after some time today. So we skip our Lord's Supper last Saturday as we celebrate our anniversary. In our time, that desertion, denial, Betrayal is becomes common. A lot of allies end up war. Friends become enemies. The worst is marriage become becomes broken because of denial, desertion, betrayal of one another. Kita kita ko natin ito ngayon. In the time of Jesus, this was his very own disciples desert him, betray him, or the famous says, deny him. So today as we look at these verses, there are three points we need to look at. Peter's confession when, when he is distressed. Ang kinonfess ni Pedro nung siya ay balisang balisa. Point number two is Jesus' prayer in the midst of distress. Ang panalangin ng Panginoong Isos sa gitna ng pagkabalisa. Number three is the real reason of their distress. What are the reasons behind their distress? We can read in verse 26. I'll, I'm using ESB version. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So after a hymn, or after singing a hymn, this is a clear indication of a good fellowship with his disciples. Singing a hymn. But please don't raise your voice. Pastor, we should be singing only him. Not any other kind of song. Well, we try to do that. Their fellowship with singing. Singing is a form of praise and worship to God. Singing a hymn. 
the, trad the traditional halal sang a Passover or after the Passover probably refers to Psalms chapter 118, the last psalm. I'll try to read Psalms 118. It's a very beautiful psalm. 118, it says, it is started with, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. This is a very good song of a hymn song. Verse 4, actually, Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Verse 5, Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. Verse 6. The Lord is my is, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So that is part of Psalm of Psalms 118. How so sweet reminding themselves the loving kindness of God. And after that. After singing the psalm, then they went to Mount of Olives, most probably after a meal. Kumain muna sila at sila ay papunta na sa Mount of Olives. In verse 27, and they said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Verse 28, but after I raise up, I will go before you to Galilee. This is hard for the disciples to take. After all, they leave everything. Following Jesus, they leave their profession, profession they leave their family. And then they decided to follow Jesus. And then now Jesus is saying, All of you will fall away. Diba? Now Jesus telling them, All will fall away. They will desert him. They will deny Jesus. This is really true, Jesus? Are you kidding? Diba? Nagbibiro kaya si Jesus? Well, marami pa kong biniro. Nagtampo. But this is real situation on their time. Verse 29. Particularly, Peter was really disturbed. Not only the twelve, but Peter, he was really disturbed. Verse 29, Peter said to him, Even though all will fall away, I will not. Wow! Very strong, courageous response by Peter. Even though they fall away, I will not. This was Peter's curious response. He has no problem that all of his good disciples or friends will fall away. It's okay that they will fall away, but I will not. Ito yung masusing pagsabi ni Pedro. I will not desert. I will not deny you, Jesus. He cannot accept that this is true to him to deny Jesus. Hindi ako makapapayan. But Jesus most probably calmly respond to Peter. In verse 30, we can read how Jesus replied to Peter. Well, I am thinking how Jesus gently replied him. Kaya kung ako yun, huwag mo na nga akong pagsabi ya, Pedro, marunong ka pa sa akin. But Jesus was probably, he is a gentleman. Verse 30, And Jesus said to him, 
Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter, this is what you will do. Well, in Jewish time, actually, roaster is, has a very big part in their lives as well as Filipinos does. Diba? Ewan ko kung si Kuya Roy eh, malaking party sa buhay niyang manok. Lalo na yung manok na pula. Okay? There is a red color uh, <laughs> chicken or roaster. <coughs> well, in the time, the roaster is when the roaster crows, this is most probably start at 11 a.m. and ends at 3 a.m. early in the morning. And I, talk, and I think it is not only in Jewish time or Israel time, in Africa as well. For us Filipinos, when the roaster crowd, meow. <laughs> no, it's not like that. Then we know that it is early in the morning. So the same. Jesus saying to Peter, most probably because there was no piece of the time or there is no Rolex or Swats and whatever. There is a visible indication that Peter will be reminded before the rooster crows two times, you will deny me three times. Verse 31, still Peter could not accept that Jesus said this. Ayaw niyo matanggap. He said, emphatically, if I must die with you, I will deny you. And then, all the disciples said the same. We will not deny you, Jesus! Over my dead body. It cost me life. No way. Kaling ano? This is what Peter is saying to Jesus. Well, we can relate later on because I think we are all people. Unanimously, all the disciples said they will not deny Jesus. But Jesus knows they will. This will happen. And it happens. As we look to other verses later. Here we clearly see Peter is trying to emphasize that he is exception to the rule. Iba ako sa kanila. And this is what we do all the time or most of the time. Even earlier he asked Jesus, it is I in verse 19, it is I, Jesus, who deny you. Ako ba ang magbidinay sa'yo? Now, Jesus answered him in the progress of their conversation. He could not accept the fact that he deserved or he denied Jesus. Well, if we look at Peter in this passage, or in other passages, he is not lacking the desire to be faithful to Jesus. Hindi siya nagkukulang kanyang pagnanais na maging tapat kay Jesus. He is not lacking the willingness to follow Jesus even to the grave. Even I will die, Jesus, I will follow you. We could not see the incensor of Peter's comment. He fully believed his words. Look, sincere, si Peter is very sincere. We could, we do not have any hand that he is just joking. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, this is an ancient saying. It says, Pride goes before destruction 
and a Holy Spirit before a fall. Peter unknowingly fulfilling these ancient words here in this conversation. We see pride by Peter when we look at all the verses. Nakita, makita natin yung kanya pagiging prideful. Bagamat, but it does not fully explain what is going going on in that conversation. Now we need to be reminded not to be prideful. Point number two. Jesus' prayer in the midst of distress. In verses 20, uh, 32-36. With his disciple, Jesus went to Gethsemane. And that is in verse 32. Okay? And he went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciple, Sit here while I pray. So Gethsemane in Hebrew means this is oil press. And this is a, this is a garden full of olives. Marami pong olibo sa lugar na ito. Also, Jesus usually go this place. Dito siya lagi pumupunta with his disciples when he want to withdraw from the crowds and pray. So this is Jesus' favorite place. Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. In verse uh, 33, and he took with him Peter, James, and John. And he uh, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. He took the main leader of his disciples. Some people called him B3, the big three disciples. Peter, James, and John. Leaving the rest of disciples, these three disciples went along with Jesus while Jesus was praying. Because of this, this created an opportunity for Judas Iscariot to slip away to betray Jesus. Aha! Uh -huh. Now no one watches me. I need to do my business. So Jesus had his three leaders, most probably to give a lesson, a good teaching that Peter, James, and John to possess and to give to other disciples. Jesus began to be greatly distressed and troubled. In Greek word, trouble or distress, feeling or sense of terrified amazement. He is facing the dreadful fury of God against sin. Jesus will bear the, the fury, the wrath of God. He is facing this dreadful situation. He said to his disciples, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. In verse 34. This kind of trouble causes even threatening to cause him to death. Matinde, extremely severe. Actually, in Luke, in Luke's account, in Luke chapter 22, verse 44, when Jesus is praying great drops of blood, 
This is true medically that some people who are greatly distressed or stressed even some get die. What is the reason for Jesus' distress? I was thinking that he should become unsmiling. As some people does when they, are, they know they are dying, they just come and wait for the, for the time to be dead. But Jesus is different. He is praying. Jesus actually is not just facing death. He is facing the wrath of God. Previously, as we read Mark chapter 10, verse 4, I just go back. What is it? In, John, in Mark chapter 4, verse 10, he said, Moses allowed a man to write certificate. Sorry. I think I. Actually, what I'm trying to give the text is. I come to give my life for many as a ransom. He is not fair with it. He is not terrified for it. The point of my preaching is it is worse than death. It is the penalty of sin. The fury of God because of sin. In verse, in verse 35, we can read And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that If it were possible, the hour might pass through him See that? And then in verse 36 Jesus said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. This is where we can see the good news. Jesus is not asking God if he had the power to let the cup pass from, from him. But if it were possible in God's plan, Jesus to forsake this cup at the cross of Calvary. But the plan of God is that he will suffer, sacrifice at the cross of Calvary. And Jesus is saying, not my will, but yours. We praise the Lord. Because Jesus lovingly, willingly, accept what was the plan of the Father. In Psalms chapter 75 verse 8, as we read this verse, so we, could, we can understand the gravity of the death of Christ at the cross of Calvary. It says, for in the hand of the Lord, there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed, and pours out from it. And all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. Jesus is drinking the wrath of God, the fury of God. This cup Jesus refers to. He said, this is my blood of covenant as we uh, study last, last time in previous verses. This cup of mercy for his disciples, for those who believe in him. But now Jesus knows that he must drink the cup of wrath. He completely empties the cup, the cup of wrath, so that 
we might freely drink the cup of mercy. Ininom ni Kristo ang kaparusahan ng kasalanan para tayo ay malaya ang uminom sa kanyang haba. Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 to 8 He is in the form of God but emptied himself Anata become equal to, to God but choose to become man image of man and then Paul says he is obedient even to the point of death it's, it only it, it is clear to us that Jesus obeyed even it caused him life in 2 Corinthians chapter 20 verse 21 I just read it to us it's a beautiful saying by Paul Paul write this clearly Ephesians chapter 2 uh, chapter 2 Corinthians sorry 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 to 21 Therefore we are ambassador for Christ God making his appeal through us we implore you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God verse 21 for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God Jesus is taking that cup so that those who believe in him God sees them as righteous Mark chapter 13 uh, 15 verse 34 after 15 we'll go that after some time but we just look at this verse 15 verse 34 one of my favorite verse Fifteen verse thirty-four. I'll read it. It says, "And in the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani." Which means, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" Maybe you will ask. What is this pastor saying? This is his favorite verse. Yes. I do. Ito po ang isa pong favoritong verse. Some people jump and it's exactly saying, See, this is your God who was forsaken by God. He cried out saying, why have you forsaken me? If someone said so, said to you like that, that is out of context. The essence of why Jesus saying that he was forsaken by the Father. The Father could not see Jesus carrying the sins of the world. He abandoned Jesus. Because God wants wants the sinner to be reconciled to him. And Jesus is saying, So be it, Father. I'll do this so that anyone who will live in me will never, ever taste this kind of suffering, this kind of death. Whoever believe in Jesus, they are fully paid. Whoever believe in Him, they have eternal life. And actually, Jesus saying, whoever believe in me, whoever repent and believe in me, you will never suffer what I have done, what I have suffered. And that is the only moment Jesus suffered in his life 
and will never suffer again. And those who believe in him, Paul says, in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, There is now no condemnation to those who believe in Christ. That's the good news. We could not save ourselves by coming to the church, by doing anything good works. We praise the Lord for the good news that Jesus dies at the cross of Calvary instead of you. Jesus is saying, I am not a sinner. I am not supposed to be to be dead, die, but I will do this for the love of whom the Father loves. This is the good news. This is what Christianity is, and that's what Jesus prayed. Out of his distress, not my will, but your but yours, Father, and we praise the Lord. For the will of the Father that we sinner will be saved. Praise the Lord for Jesus willingly, lovingly. John chapter 19, verse 30. One of the famous saying of Jesus. It is till it's time. It is finished. I already paid. The penalty of your sin. You sinners. You repent. You believe in me. Pay it all. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 I think. Paul says. All your sins. Past, present and future sins. Pay it all. Wow. This is amazing. That's why there is no other Savior apart from Christ. We stand in the, in the ground. That's primary. No one will be saved apart from Christ. In Acts chapter 4 verse 12. There is now, uh, and there is no salvation in no one else. For there is, uh, uh, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. It is only exclusive to Christ. That's why what the pastor said last time, we need to protect the gospel. We need to leave the gospel. We need to share the gospel. This is the gospel. What the Lord and Savior Jesus does we proclaim this. This is why biblical Christianity is supreme compared to other religion. Because we have a Savior. Jesus died at the cross of Calvary, rose in three days, and now praying for us. That any time we, we will be with Him. I repeat, any time. If I will die today or after some time, I am sure that I will be in Jesus. In the twinkling of an eye, Paul says, we will see him face to face. We are the so-called Christian. We are in the religion of done. Jesus done it all. Feed it all. And some other religion, they keep on asking, saying, do this, do this. For us, it is finished. Point number three. The real reason of your distress. <laughs> three times Jesus asked his disciples to pray. Three times. But what happened was you are caught out sleeping. Yeah, we laugh because that is what we do also. 
Or even we don't pray. Right? Actually, I remember last other, other Saturday, Pastor Celso said a very lengthy prayer like in the morning at uh, in the evening until in the morning. Uh, because we fall asleep and then Amen is early in the morning. Well, actually, It is not true for a growing church, growing, maturing Christian. So three times, in verse 37, we can read that. We start reading our Bible again. And he came and found him sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, you are asleep. Could you not watch an hour? Last time, they were in Mount Uli. Jesus warned them the suffering. And Jesus told them to stay awake. And I remember, I think I am the one who preached that. We can read that in verse 13, <coughs> verse 37. Here, specifically, Jesus called Peter and he called him, not Peter. He called him Simon. Simon, halika nga dito. Hindi ka man lang makapag... Hindi ka man lang maka... Tawag nito, makapagpanalangin. Tulog ka ng tulog. Simon, it means Peter is not living up to the significance and the meaning of his name. Peter, small stone. He is not living accordingly. Jesus kept Jesus calling Peter to be spiritually alert. Be watchful spiritually. And in that spiritual alertness will transfer into physical alertness. There is a connection being spiritual alert and then physical alert. I remember sometime that I really, if I can spunk myself, I, I need to beat myself. Why like this? Why it is like happening? Some part, part of my life, the moment the preaching started, I feel sleepy. If I need to look at myself. When I look for YouTube, Oh, very good. Stepping carry, 47 points. I can memorize a lot of things. I'm still awake. But sometimes, with the spiritual things, I'm very dark. But assuming very strong, never over my dead body. I am the committed Christian I am. A similar Peter. Peter says, but Jesus said, be alert. What happening to your physical life is just what happening to your spiritual life. Verse 38. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus gave in them a new words. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Willingness of the spirit is not enough. We need to live according to what the spirit says. And that is what he is saying to Peter. Peter, you are very brave. Over my dead body. What happened after? Next verses. Peter denied Jesus three times. Let's see what happened to us. I love you, Lord. <laughs> when I was there in the in the sky of church, this is one of the favorite songs. Raising up my hand. 
with full of emotion. It's just more of feelings. There is no understanding of what I'm saying, and I have no understanding who is Jesus actually. It's disaster. I'm thinking that I am exception to the rule. And I am like Peter. Jesus in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, he was tempted in every way. But he never does sin. Jesus is alert spiritually. And that physically is also alert and willing to give his life. That's the difference. Peter was exposed like the rest of us. We are weak. We are so boastful. We are prideful. I can do this. In Filipino, ako pa. We are so boastful. But Jesus is saying, you will deny me. Again, this is our Lord and Savior Jesus. He knows that those who believe in Him genuinely, they will do a hunky punky thing. They will actually keep on falling. But the good news is Jesus as our priest, high priest. He look, just we need to read this beautiful verse, what Jesus did to, to him. Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Yeah. See? We can learn a lot how to trust really Jesus. Luke chapter 22 verse 32. It says, I will start in verse 31. Simon, Simon, behold, sit and demand you to have you, demand you to have you, that he might sit you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have returned again, strengthen your brother. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. See what happened? Our faith is a gift from God, from Jesus. Even if we rely only with our gifts, we will fail. It is Jesus who prayed Peter. Satan is demanding you. But I prayed. I am interceding for you, Peter. I will not allow that, Peter. You allow Peter, but I will not. This is my Lord. This is my Savior. If you really repent and believe in Jesus and you are doing so many hunky punky things with the Lord who will chastise you, chastise us. He will not allow. Mm -hmm. No! You are my son. I need to discipline you. It is very clear in Hebrews chapter 12, I think chapter 6. Revelation chapter 3 verse 19 To those whom I love I will trust in them Paul says in his letter to Corinthians You are hard headed You are weak Some of you are already died Kinuha na ng Panginoon They are taken by the Lord So Jesus as a priest He prayed for us Now actually Jesus is saying we need to live the newness of life. Put on the new life. We as believers live this kind of life. 
not the old life. Ephesians chapter 4, chap chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. It is refreshing to us. We just heard this a while ago, last Wednesday. Okay? So Ephesians, put out the new self. Ito yung ginawa ng Panginoon. Ito yung bagong buhay. Then wag nang mabuhay sa lumang pagkabuhay. Do not live in the old life. I'll read it. I'll read the Colossians. Just look at that one. Put it in your notes. Colossians chapter 3. This is what Peter says to Colossians believers. These are genuine believers. Verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Sit your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Verse 5. Put to death, therefore, what earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. On the account of this, the wrath of God is coming. In this, you two once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene obs talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices. And you have put on the new self, which being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Christian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. So, the difference was, the moral aspect of Peter and Jesus. In our conclusion, we need to live the gospel. Living the gospel is living in Christ. Living the gospel is living for Christ. Living for Christ is for His glory. Living for Christ, for His glory, that is for the glory of God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your kindness, for your love to us sinners. We see your wrath against sin, but we praise you because of your love, you give your son Jesus as a ransom for us. Because of your grace, instead of receiving wrath, you give us Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Instead of punishing us, you didn't give you did not give us punishment, but you give it to your begotten Son Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your prayer, not your will, but the will of the Father. Thank you for lovingly, willingly taking up that wrath of God that we sinners might have lied. Convict us in this gospel. Convict us by the Holy Spirit that we will live for the gospel. We live in Christ and for the glory of, name, of your name. And this is we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen.